now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On, King! On, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns has exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit, like, say, sliced bananas. Add milk and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear, but fast. The town of Chiliwa consisted of a few houses, a dance hall, a couple of cafes, and the bank which served the prospectors in the surrounding hills. Martin Garner, owner of the bank, looked out the window just in time to see an old man leaning into the wind with a small dog at his side. Joe, you'd better get out the scales. Look who's coming. <laughs> oh, old Toby Dixon. I didn't know he'd returned from that stream that he's been panning up on the side of Whiteface. I heard he was back in town. Got back several days ago. Yeah, it'd be precious little profit in the banking business if our customers were all like Toby. Come on, Blackie. Come on in. Morning, Mr. Garner. Hello, Toby. And Mr. Thorne. Glad to see you, too. Hello, Dixon. Uh, can't that dog of yours stay outside? Blackie! Oh, now, Mr. Garner, Blackie don't do no harm. It's powerful cold outside for a little fellow like him. I suppose you have a couple of ounces of dust to be weighed, hmm, Toby? That's right, Mr. Garner, and uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to change it for folding money. Folding money? You must have quite a bit of it by this time. Yes, sir. I've panned old Whiteface Stream all these years. I've been fighting this Yukon weather and saving for the day when I'd have enough cash to go back to the States. And now, by ginger, I've got it. Here's my poke. Weigh out that dust, son, and pay me off in folding money. Go ahead, Joe. Yes, sir. It's none of my business, Toby, but uh, you're taking a big chance keeping so much money in your house. Some pretty rough characters in Chillicore. Living alone as you do at the edge of town with no protection. No that, uh, protection? Well, Blackie's the best dad ratted watchdog that ever drawed breath. Maybe he's old and small, but just let anyone try to get near my house and Blackie will make the welkin ring. Yes, sir. Won't you, Blackie? Wow. Then I'll blaze away with this here six-gun. Why, with Blackie and this six-gun protecting my cash, no one but a fool would try to rob me. All right, suit yourself. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I'll tell you something, Mr. Garner. I've got to be mighty confidential about this. Yeah, now you needn't whisper. There's no one in the bank. Well, your clerk... Eh, Joe sir. Thorne wouldn't be working for me unless he could be trusted. Well, I'm just going to say that no one can get my cash till they find it. And they'll never find it. No? Look, you see this shirt? It's made double. What about it? Well, this here shirt is my bank. Every time I get some folding money, I make a little slit in the lining of this here shirt and sew the cash inside. My cash is always with me. Here's your folding money, Toby. Oh, thanks, Mr. Thorne. Uh, and now I'll be getting on my way. Come on, Blackie. Yeah, take care of yourself, Toby. Don't you worry about me, Mr. Garner. Not while I got my gun and Blackie. Uh, good day to you, Mr. Thorne. Good day. It was early morning, about a week later, when Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, came into Chiliwa. As they neared a small, well-kept house, the door opened and Doc Brady called... Hey there. Hi, Sergeant Preston. Doc Brady, hello. Wait a minute, will you? Sure will. Come on, King. Let's say hello to our friend. Uh, just happened to see you coming. Uh, come in, come in. Come on, King. <laughs> well, it's 
start walking on that ice. Yeah, throw off your pocket. Come over by the fire. Why, well, I can't stay long, Doc. Just passing through. I'm doing Whitehorse tomorrow. Have to appear at a trial. Oh, that's too bad. I hoped you'd stay for at least a few days. Huh? Any particular reason? There's trouble brewing. Trouble? You know Toby Dixon, don't you? Toby Dixon. Let me think. Old sourdough. He's been panning mountain streams for some time. Lives north of here at the edge of town. Oh, yes, I remember, Toby. Well, when he came back from his last trip about ten days ago, he let it be known all over town that he had all the cash he needed. He said he was going back to the States. They shouldn't talk so freely. And he found that out. Someone got into his house while he was in the cafe. The place was ransacked from top to bottom. That was night before last. There was a prowler around his house in the middle of the night. His dog started barking and woke the old man up. Scared the prowler away. Anything happened last night? And I haven't heard. Hey, Doc! Oh, sounds like Jake Tabor. Hey, Doc, you better come quick. Where? Uh, I'm out here. Hey, Sergeant Preston. Hey, hey, that dog. Don't let him near me. Big old hurt you. Quiet, Jake. Quiet, well, who's hurt, Jake? Oh, Toby Dixon sent me to get you, Doc. Uh, my bag's right there. Take it, Jake, while I get into my coat. Hey, I was just passing by when he stuck his head out the door and yelled at me. He told me to come on the run and get you. Yeah, I'm ready. I'll go with you. Come on, King. <laughs> It took but a few minutes to reach the small one-room cabin where Toby Dixon lived with his dog, Blackie. Doc Brady opened the door with Sergeant Preston and Jake Tabor and King close behind. Old Toby knelt beside his small dog who lay motionless on the bunk. What is it, Toby? What's the matter? Oh, dog, it, it's Blackie. Take a look at the poor little critter. Your dog? Yes. <laughs> Steady, King. Oh, Sergeant Preston, sakes alive, Sergeant. I'm glad you're here. Toby? This looks like a knife wound. That's what it is, Doc. When I found Blackie, he was laying in the snow, and the knife was sticking into him. I carried him in here and put him on the bunk. Doc, he, he ain't moved. Toby, I'm sorry. That dog is dead. I, I thought as much, but... Doc, who'd do it? Who's on enough to, to do a thing like this? Why, why, it's murder. Sergeant Preston, you've got to find the killer. Do you have the knife? Yes. Yeah, Right there on the floor. Oh, yes, I see it. Oh, poor fella. Doggone. Doggone, Toby. I'm sorry about that. I know what that dog meant to you. Yeah, he was my pal. That's what he was. He's been with me for nine years. Uh, have you any idea who did this, Toby? No. Where'd you find him, Toby? Out front, laying on the ice. That ice won't show footprints. You know who owns this knife? No, Sergeant. I never saw it before. Hey, that looks like Bart Weaver's knife. Bart Weaver? He's new in town. He works in the cafe. This is his knife or one just like it. Was Blackie friendly with Bart Weaver? Blackie was friendly with everyone, Sergeant. Bart Weaver, Jake here. He was friends with everyone. Anyone could have knifed him while he was saying good morning. But he barked at the prowler who was here the night before last. Prowler? Oh, you know about that? I told him, Toby. Well, he'd bark at anyone who comes sneaking up during the night, just the same as he'd be friends with anyone who'd come up to pat him during the day. Toby, I think your dog was killed by the man or men who were trying to steal your money. Your yeah, dog gone right, Sergeant. He found out he couldn't do it with Blackie on guard, so he killed Blackie. But he won't get away with it, no siree. You'll get the killer, won't you, Sergeant Preston? You and King will get on his tail and stay on it until you get him. The ice doesn't show any trail, Toby. And a lot of people have walked over the street, so King couldn't follow his scent. Well, that won't stop you, Sergeant. Uh, will it? Toby, I've got to leave Chilliwa in less than an hour. I've got to be in Whitehorse tomorrow. No, Sergeant. I've got to be there to appear at a trial, but I'll come back here as soon as I can. And we'll see what we can do to find the man who killed your dog. I'll give a reward, Sergeant Preston. Look, I've got all my savings right here in paper money. It's sewed inside my shirt. Inside your shirt? I'll give every dollar of it as a reward. Toby... Don't tell people where your money's hidden. Sure. I can trust you and Doc and Jake here. Well, don't tell anyone else. Now, listen, Toby. There might be another attempt to steal your money, so I'm going to leave King with you. You're going to leave your dog? Yes. And keep him with you every minute of the day and night till I get back. And then we'll see what we can do. Before I leave, we'll talk to Bart Weaver and see what he has to say about this night. Doc returned to his office, and Jake remained to bury Blackie. While Sergeant Preston, accompanied by Toby and King, called on Bart Weaver in the cafe. Bart looked at the knife. That's my knife, all right. I lost it a couple of weeks ago. Where'd you get it, Sergeant? I found it. It was used to kill my dog. No, you don't say. Say, Toby, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm mighty sorry. I know how much you thought of Blackie. Why, 
Are you with him? Bart stuck to his story of having lost his knife sometime previously. And in the limited time at his command, Sergeant Preston could go no further in the investigation. He and King returned to Toby's house. I give you my word, Toby. I'll return from Whitehorse as soon as possible. All right, Sergeant. Now, remember what I told you about King. And you, King, you're to take care of Toby. Understand, boy? Give King a good meal at supper time, Toby. I'll take care of him, Sergeant. You can bet on that. I've got a section of caribou hanging out back. He'll eat all right. You two should become great friends while I'm away. And you needn't worry about anyone getting close to your house. I won't worry. I reckon King's is... Just as good a watchdog as Blackie was. Bye, Toby. Uh, bye, Sergeant. Bye, King. Now behave yourself, fella. Don't eat any strange food. Well, don't you worry, Sergeant. Like I said, I've got plenty of that caribou hanging out back. He'll be well fed. All right, Toby. See you soon. That night at supper time, Toby cut off a good sized slab of the caribou meat that hung behind his house and gave King a hearty meal. As for himself, the old man had no appetite. He turned in earlier than usual and tossed restlessly for some time before he finally fell asleep. It was the middle of the night when a figure crept stealthily to the cabin door, opened it, and went inside. There was no alarm from King, who lay motionless near the foot of Toby's bunk. The great dog was at that very moment more nearly dead than alive, a victim of poison the intruder had put on the caribou meat that hung behind the cabin. Then Toby wakened. <laughs> What's going on? I hear someone. Quiet. What are you doing in here? The man's hand holding a pistol rose and fell. The weapon's barrel thudded against poor Toby's head with stunning force. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, supposing you're an inventor... Yep, and you set out to invent a ready-to-eat breakfast cereal. Well, sir, how about it? Would you want a jaw-breaking cereal that made you think you were chewing nails? No, you wouldn't want a cereal as tough to chew as that. Most certainly not. And when you add milk or cream, you wouldn't want that cereal to go soft and flat on you like a bicycle tire. <laughs> nope. What you'd probably be looking for most of all is a cereal that's crisp and tender as nuts in November. Well, if that's the kind you want, that's what you get in the delicious cereal shot from guns. The original, the one and only, Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. Yes, Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice are crisp and tender. Just right. What's more, wheat and rice shot from guns are loaded with bang-up, nut-like flavor. And good for you, too. That's because Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Take a tip. Ask Mom to look for those famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Tomorrow, get delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice shot from guns. And now to continue our story. It was late afternoon when Sergeant Preston moved with swinging strides over the icy trail on his return from Whitehorse. The trip had been a lonely one. The Mountie missed the companionship of his great dog, King. Throughout the trip, he had frequently thought of Toby Dixon. What if someone killed King as old Toby's dog had been killed? He could fully understand the old man's heart sickness and his eagerness to find and punish the one who had been responsible. In a few minutes now, Sergeant Preston would reach old Toby's cabin. He would rejoin King. Suddenly, at the edge of town, the Mountie heard a shout. Hey, it was Bart Weaver, owner of the knife that had killed Blackie. Sergeant Preston. Yes, Weaver. I got something to tell you. Oh, what is it, Bart? I'm in a hurry. They told me you'd be in Whitehorse today. I was there early this morning. Well, listen, Sergeant. You suspected me of killing Dixon's dog, and I can't prove an alibi for yesterday morning when the dog was killed. But I've got an alibi for last night. What about last night? Someone knocked out old Toby and made off with all his money. He was sewed inside his shirt. But I left King to guard old Toby. The dog was poisoned. What? Doc Brady's still at Toby's house. He's been there since... See you later. Preston didn't wait to hear the rest. He set out at a run, covering the remaining distance to Toby Dixon's house in the shortest possible time. Sergeant Preston. Bart, I heard about King. King. Oh, what have they done to you? Look at him. Weak as a kitten. He's past the crisis and out of danger. You can thank Toby for saving his life. Toby? Oh, forgive me. I was so concerned about King... How are you? I'm all right, Sergeant. Well, what happened last night? Well, I can't tell you much. I fed King some of the caribou that I had hanging out back. Yes? And I didn't have none more on self as I wasn't hungry. Well, 
We turned in, and sometime during the night, I woke up. I heard the floor creaking from someone moving inside the house. Could you see who it was? No, it was too dark. And something hit me on the head. I was knocked out. Come to, and then struck a light. Then I saw King stretched out on the floor. His legs as stiff as ramrods, and he was shaking like 60. What'd you do for him? Well, I knew it was poison, Sergeant. I'd seen it work before. I melted down some tallow and forced it down the dog's throat. He got rid of some of the poison. Then I give him some more hot tallow and kept it up until daybreak. I just happened to drop in this morning. I've been here ever since. Did King eat anything except that caribou? Not a thing, Sergeant. I examined the caribou. Someone had poisoned the meat. King, poor old fellow. I've been afraid something like this might happen. That's why I've trained you to eat only food that's furnished by people we trust. But even with all of our precautions, someone nearly got you. Doc, you sure he'll be all right? Yes, after a few days' rest, he'll be as good as new. Toby, I can't begin to thank you for what you've done. I give you my word I'll not rest until I get back your money and find the man who killed your dog. King was carefully moved to Brady's home, where Sergeant Preston was to stay for the next few days. Then, during those days, while the dog regained his strength, the Mountie put forth every effort to find evidence against the man who had ransacked Dixon's home, stabbed his dog, poisoned King, and stolen old Toby's money. But his efforts led nowhere. It was evening when he sat with the doctor in front of the fireplace. King lay on the floor nearby. King seemed quite lively when he went for a walk tonight, Doc. He's nearly back to his normal strength. Perhaps he can go with me tomorrow. Yes, I think he can. Good. Hear that, King? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he'd be glad to be back in harness. But tell me, Preston, have you any idea as to the poisoner's identity? Yes, I have. You have? I'm pretty sure I know who he is. But that doesn't mean a thing. Besides, King's reaction doesn't back up my suspicion. Oh, I don't understand. Doc... You remember the first attempt to get Toby's money? Yes, yeah, someone ransacked his house while he was out. The thief didn't know where the cash was hidden, but the night King was poisoned, the thief knew just where to go for the cash. He slugged Toby and stripped off his shirt. At that time, not many people knew where Toby kept his cash. And the banker knew it, and so did his clerk. Toby told both of them. Yes, but they knew about it before the house was ransacked. If either Garner or Joe Thorne had turned thief, they'd have known where to go for the cash. Well, that's good logic. They wouldn't have searched through the house while Toby was out. Now, when the thief actually got the cash, he knew where to look for it. He slugged Toby and stripped off his shirt. That means that the thief is a man who learned about that shirt on the day of the robbery. Yeah, that narrows it down. To one man, Jake Tabor, who was with us when Toby told about his shirt. Jake Tabor, and he's just the type. Preston, I think he's your man. I can't find a shred of evidence to back that suspicion, Doc. I'm trying to think of a way to trap Jake Tabor, make him show his hand. I think I have a way, but I'll need your help, Doc. Count on it. Now, here's my plan. You've got to call on Toby tonight. Tell him he's to become ill, very ill. Then go to the cafe and tell Bart Weaver and a few others that you're very concerned. Hint that Toby might be coming down with a very serious fever. Something. It was one hour later when Doc Brady visited the cafe. Yes, indeed, Bart. I just came from Toby's place, and frankly, I'm very, very worried. Poor old Toby. His luck is sure running money, huh? Hey, Doc, what's that about old Toby? Oh, hello, Jake. Toby got more trouble? He's sick, Jake. I'm afraid it might be very bad. I'll know better in the morning. Well, what's the matter with him? Looks like the fever. Fever? A very, very dangerous fever. As bad as smallpox. Smallpox? Hey, uh, did I hear some mention of smallpox? Yes, you did, Thorne. Doc was just saying that Toby's got a fever that's worse than smallpox. No, no, I'm not sure, mind you. I'll see what develops in the morning. Worse than smallpox. Gosh, Doc, is that catching? Yeah, is it? If Toby has the fever I'm thinking of, we'll have to put a guard at his house to be sure no one gets close to him. I uh, suppose you can cure Toby. I'll do my best. I'll hurry over to Whitehorse and get a special medicine. The only thing that will prevent or cure such a disease. Uh, prevent it, you say? Uh-huh. It would protect a man who had been exposed to it. Can't you get enough of that medicine to supply the folks here in town, Doc? Just so none of us would catch it? Yeah. Oh, no, Bob. That would be out of the question. As a matter of fact, I'll have to do a lot of persuading to get the doctor in Whitehorse to give me enough for Toby. There's very little of that medicine in the Yukon Territory. Nowhere near enough to supply people who are not ill. What are we going to do? Well, we'll hope for the best. 
I'll be seeing you, boys. So long, Doc. After Doc had left the cafe, the news spread rapidly. By the following morning, the whole town was buzzing with talk about old Toby's mysterious ailment. When a guard was placed at Toby's door, the worst fears were confirmed. Ah, Toby's in a bad way. Poor old critter, I'm sorry for him. Did you hear what Doc said last night about a special medicine? Yeah, yeah Toby's had a lot of hard luck. Sergeant Preston heard snatches of conversation from the curious onlookers. Then the doctor came out of the house dressed for travel. Ready, Doc? Uh, yes. How's our plan working? First rate so far. Sorry you have to take a trip to Whitehorse. Oh, I don't mind. It'll do me good. Now, let me see. I should be there by noon and back here sometime in the late afternoon. And while you're there, you'll pick up a bottle of medicine with Dr. Jackson's name on it. Leave that to me. I'll keep an eye on Jake. If he's as guilty as I think he is, he'll be very worried about the shirt in his possession. I dropped a few remarks hinting that Toby's stolen shirt might carry the fever germ. He'll make an attempt to waylay you on the back trail, take the medicine away from you. And if he comes out to meet me, you'll be following him. That's right. King and I will follow him, and I hope we'll finish this day with a confession. As the day passed, Jake went about his normal pursuits with Sergeant Preston watching. Mid-afternoon found Jake still in town, engaged in a poker game in the cafe. Sergeant Preston and King were waiting outside. King, if Jake intends to intercept the doctor, it's time for him to leave town. The minutes dragged into an hour. It was time for Dr. Brady to be back, and Jake still lingered at the card game. King sensed his master's restlessness. He saw Sergeant Preston glancing at his watch with increasing frequency as another hour dragged by. Then Jake came out of the cafe. I'll be back tonight to give you boys a chance to get back your lot. <laughs> oh, hello, Sergeant. Howdy, King. How'd you make out, Jake? I want to tidy seven the boys. They're all skittish about the chances of catching Toby's fever. Your minds ain't on the game. I see. I want enough to buy me some new clothes. I'm on my way to spend it before I get into another card game. <laughs> well, I'll see you again. King, he certainly doesn't act like the guilty man. <laughs> Once more, the Mountie looked at his watch. Dr. Brady should have been back here an hour ago. I, I wonder. We're going to go out and meet him. One, King. King thrilled to the summons. It was good to be back on the trail, trotting at his master's side. Sergeant Preston had traveled less than one mile after leaving the town when he saw Doc Brady. Doc, come on, boy. There was something wrong. Doc's hat was gone, and he walked with dragging steps, weaving from side to side. Preston! Doc, what's the matter with you? What happened? You said you'd watch. Here, take my arm. No, no I'll be all right in a few minutes. How did Jake get away from you? He didn't. He's in town right now. Someone slugged me from behind. I, I don't know who. I was unconscious. When I came to, the bottle of medicine was gone. I was pretty unsteady on my feet for a time, but I'm better now. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Can you take me back to that spot on the trail? Yes, but the ground's frozen too hard to show footprints. We don't need footprints. King's back on the job. He'll get the scent. Let's go, King. Come on. It was only a couple of hundred yards to the place where Doc had fallen. And there, the great dog King reacted violently. He found and recognized a scent he hated. He remembered a prowler in the night. A man who had hurt old Toby at a time when he, King, lay helpless. He looked up at his master. He wanted desperately to follow that trail. All right, King, take the lead, fellow. On King! Follow us, Doc. All right, Sergeant. King streaked across the ice and hard-packed snow, angling off the trail. Then he cut back in the direction of town and went directly to a small house. He snarled and barked and clawed at the door until his master caught up. All right, King. We're going in, boy. Open up. I want to talk to you. The door was opened by Joe Thorne, clerk in Garner's Bank. That door. Get down. Get down. Hello, King. What's the matter with him? He hates crooks, Thorne. Uh, crooks? You knocked Dr. Brady down. No, no. Don't I... lie about it. King has the scent. He followed you. I think a search of this house will reveal the bottle of medicine you took from Doc Brady. He's on the way here and will identify it. And the search might reveal Toby Dixon's shirt. Get that dog out of here. He's on the track of something. Get out of there, you mutt. Get away from that fence. Get away. He's found something. Don't kill him. Oh, you don't, boy. I'll take that gun. Don't. Now stand over there. We'll see what King's trying to pull out from under that mattress. Preston! Preston, this is Thorn's house. Yes, and come here, Doc. Look what King found. 
Toby Dixon's shirt. Then Cohen is the one. That dog, the confounded dog. Yes, the dog you tried to poison. Uh, I admit it, Preston. I, I guess you win. You tried to frame Bart Weaver for the stabbing of Blackie. Uh, I found his knife. I meant to return it to him, but I didn't get around to it. And when I learned that old Toby had money, well, uh, you know the answers. All the answers but one. I can't understand why you ransacked the house on the first night you tried to steal the money. It wasn't me the first night, Preston. Oh? Huh? <laughs> It was my boss. The banker? Yeah, Garner himself. He was afraid someone would rob Toby. So he went to the house and messed things up a little, hoping to frighten the old man into putting his money in the bank. And I'll be doggone. He was sure someone would get the cash that's inside that shirt. And so was I. And I thought I might as well be the lucky one. I'm telling you all this because I... Well, I'm done for. I've been handling that germ-laden shirt so much I'm ready to catch a fever. In fact, I feel the beginning of it already. And what about that medicine you took from me? I was just going to take it when that dog came barking at the door. <laughs> <laughs> it won't matter, Thorne, because, you see, there is no fever. No fever? <laughs> oh, Toby, just as well as I am. No. <laughs> and that medicine is nothing but ordinary bitter. Frick! <laughs> I'm just all the way. And all because of a dog. Yes, King. Thanks to you, boy, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Say, don't be missing out. Get next to the breakfast treat that's so popular with many He-Man Hollywood movie stars. Yes, you've guessed it. It's swell-tasting Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice with milk and fruit. Check up right now. Make sure to have a good supply of both delicious kinds on hand for this coming weekend. And don't forget, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. That's your guarantee you're getting the original crisp, fresh Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Samaritan of the Trail. The Samaritan was known as Father John. We knew that the last years of his life had been devoted to the service of his fellow men. But his life before that time was a closed book. Then one day, King and I learned the grim secret of his past. That was the beginning of an exciting manhunt with death as a milestone. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. <laughs> For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>